This is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. The Cowboys are on the clock. Your war room for insider news and draft analysis. The Dallas Cowboys select Ezekiel Elliott. And now, your hosts, Dane Brugler, David Hellman, and Brian Broaddus. Well, good morning to you, or good afternoon to you, wherever you might be listening. Uh, it's the Draft Show uh, here from Mobile. Brian Broaddus, David Hellman, Dane Brugler for one final time as we get you ready for Thursday practice here in Mobile, Alabama after a soggy Wednesday practice where we were unable to uh, uh, evaluate where we were at uh, to, uh, to, uh, to see practice. So, But we have our ways, right, Dane Brugler? Yeah. We, we have our ways to go back and watch practice when they, uh, when they try and kick us out of practice. Right? Technology is a great thing. You know, Technology and, and is a great it's, thing. it's great to know people uh, say, in the league. Dane's that, got that pull. Yeah, that's that's the great thing about being in the scouting community is that you have friends that yes. appreciate that you work just as hard as they do. And so uh, we're going to get into some of the Wednesday practice, even though we didn't get a chance to put eyes on it live. Uh, Dane had the opportunity. And, and also on the NFL, uh, excuse me, on the ESPNU yesterday, we were able to watch a little bit. But uh, Dane was able to sit down and, and bang through some tape. So we'll get through that. Uh, and kind of talk about some of the things that he saw yesterday. Get you ready for today. Uh, again, another practice at Lad Peebles Stadium. Uh, it will be a full padded practice. Weather should not be a problem today, and we will be there. I will have coverage uh, of a practice report. Uh, David Hellman will be have some information from there as well. And Dane Brugler, as always, you can follow him on Twitter with some great insight of things that he's doing. So, uh, Dane, I'm going to turn it over to you just uh, j- just overview again. North South practices at South Alabama yesterday. Um, the indoor facility. Things that 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 stood out for you. You've talked a lot about matchups. You know that's mm-hmm. the one thing I think from the Senior Bowl. When you watch the Senior Bowl, you get the idea of it is about a lot of one-on-one matchups. And you know, so you get look at you some small school guys going up against some big school guys, vice versa, you know, that kind of thing. But talk about some of the things that you saw from the tape yesterday that really maybe stock up guys, stock down guys, things like that that you saw that you could kind of lead us into what we're going to see today. Well, I thought, uh, you know, and and this is something we – every senior bowl, you want to see – improvement week from day, practice to practice, practice you to know practice, yeah. Tuesday it can be tough the first day everyone's kind of getting their feet wet and getting acclimated to the, the setting and the situation and the coaching so you want to see okay practice two is a big practice right because you want to see these guys really really okay now they've taken ha- to the coaching a little bit exactly yeah, yeah and yeah. you get the first practice jitters right out of the way yeah. you know let's let's get going and let's, let's see who stands out I tell you what Penny Hart continues yeah. to impress yeah uh no one can cover him and you know as much as we were excited about Andy Isabella coming into the week and Isabella's been he's been good uh, I don't think he's been I don't think he's exceeded our expectations Penny Hart has exceeded our expectations um and part of that is because I'm not sure our, our expectations were high enough going in right um he was a redshirt junior who came out late in the process um, I, I saw some of him before we came down here, but not enough to have the full picture. Mm-hmm. But he's really opening eyes. Um, the quickness, the explosion, and it's not just – he has that controlled burst where he can shake the defenders in coverage. Yes. It's not only that, but he's crafty too. Right. Like he understands timing. He understands uh, you know, the dance and how to do it. So really impressive. He went up against Nasir Adderley, who's the top safety here. Yeah. probably He's the top defensive back here, uh, in my okay. opinion. And – he shook him in space. I mean, I don't even consider it a negative rep for Adderley because uh, – Adderley had an interception yesterday, too. He did. That, yeah. He picked off Daniel Jones. Yeah. Uh, and I posted some of these uh, videos on yeah. my uh, Twitter timeline. DP Burglar, uh, you can get that. If you're not following Dane already, please jump on that right now on Twitter. But, yeah, Penny Hart, uh, snap after snap, no one could really cover him. And, you know, 5'8", 180, we're talking about a smaller framed right. guy. Right. But he's pretty natural with the ball away from his body, and that's something that with Andy Isabella you worry about. Uh, I, for uh, my practice report, I did a little stock up, stock down. And stock down, I put Andy Isabella because even though he is separating, he is having a nice, doing a nice job with his routes, uh, it throws away from his body he can struggle with because he has a smaller hands. He doesn't have that huge catch radius. Right. He had a few drops yesterday on tape. So uh, that was something that stuck out. Well, Penny Hart, he was a little more natural, snaring away from his body, being comfortable uh, with those throws. So Penny Hart was the big 
guy that stood out for me based on the tape, uh, based on yesterday and, and based on the last two days. Yeah, well, it, it, to me, that's uh, this is where you uh, this is where you look at things and you kind of figure out. You know, there's Dave. There's a lot of these. Uh, there's a lot of these. You know, we, we, the, the big thing for the Cowboys has been Cole Beasley. All the the Cole Beasley talk that we've been hearing. But it seems like, you know, with Dane and what we've talked about, initially in the drafting process, if you're a Cowboy fan, you have to feel good that there's guys like Penny Hart, Andy Isabel, yeah, uh, Riffro from Clemson. I mean, and, and that's, right. just, just a, that's just a small sample size of guys. That's just guys that are here. Yeah, that's just guys that are here. Which, and I mean, I think that's the crux of the debate is I think people respect Cole Beasley's game. But it is a position that you can find talent at. Cole Beasley was an undrafted free agent. We're talking about, you know, Andy Isabella as a second round pick. Some of these, you know, guys right. being early ish draft picks, whereas, you know, it's proven you don't have to draft that high to find guys like that. So I think that's what makes the Cole Beasley topic so interesting. Uh, and for me, that's interesting to hear about Penny Hart, uh, just, which is funny because Andy Isabella is a UMass guy, yeah. but. So, I mean, you know, that's yeah. not a big school. But right. among draft nerds, he was like the talked about guy coming into this, whereas, uh, you know, you don't start hearing Penny Hart's name until maybe you get here. And well, it uh, changes your impression the, up the a little bit. The first guy, again, the first guy you talk about, guy from don't, yeah. don't do it. Yeah. Don't, don't do it. Yeah, we don't give him credit? Don't give him the credit. No, no Bobby, fine. Yeah, Bobby, Bobby Belt. Belt. Yeah, from the NFL Network. You know, was, he was. He was. And Bobby is around us all the time. He was beating me down yeah. about Penny Hart. About before Penny we Hart, got on yeah. So, Bobby, Bobby, congratulations. We'll give you full credit uh, for the Penny Hart. But some of the other the guys, uh, you know, that you've you've kind of looked at, I mean, it's. This these practices, you could get a lot of the evaluation. I keep talking about this, the one on one stuff, the you know, when they go to team, mm -hmm. who's battling who. Is there anybody else though? The need? best one on one matchup that I think we've seen here through two two practices has been Debo Samuel, okay. South Carolina wide yeah. receiver, versus Rocky Sin, the Temple Corner. Okay, let me ask you though. Okay, with Samuel, where do you see him? Because again, during the broadcast, if you're listening to uh, Bill Polian and McShay and those guys yesterday, they're trying to figure out where the South Carolina wide receiver is going to play. They, well, we talked about it yesterday on yeah, the show. Yeah. You know, what's the role? What's his fit? Because right, right. there are a lot of things that he does well. I thought yesterday during practice, the one-on-ones, he did a really nice job with his releases yeah. off the line. I think he's really physical uh, at the top of routes and then at the catch point. Uh, but, yeah, what is his exact fit in an NFL offense? Right. Uh, you know, is he best suited inside? Can he, uh, you know, can he play across the formation? I, what, what is your picture of him when you, you know, insert him into your offense? That, that's the big question. But he's having a really nice uh, nice uh, week. But, and I think it's a little give and take with Rocky Sin. Right. Sometimes Yassin gets him. Sometimes so it's been some 50 50 matchup. That I, showed that yesterday have, on film. Yeah. Both have several wins yeah. when they go up against each other. And it's been a lot of fun to watch. And they, and they, and they, and when he, when, when Samuel comes up, mm -hmm. Yassin, he comes up with him. It's not like right. they're, they're not they're trying to hide from each other. No, no, no. Yeah. They, it's, they both challenge each other. And right. I think they're both bringing out That's the best like to each see. other. That's yeah. what I like to see. That's what I like to see. And Yassin, whenever he went up against Anthony Johnson a few times and right. had some positive uh, reps. So I, I think that Rocky Yassin to me, he came in as a top corner. Yeah. He's leaving as a top corner. I yeah. don't think – I think that's – nothing has changed there. That is, is In the top corner in this game, okay, where in the big picture does he fit on people's draft boards? Where where would he be on – you know, you're going to project him somewhere. I'm going to watch the player and project him. But where is he going to – where is he going to fit on most people's draft boards? I, I think he's going to second round. Um you know, I think when we talk about the guys at the top, Greedy Williams, Byron Murphy, yeah. and then DeAndre Baker, who's yeah. not here, uh, the Georgia corner. Um, and I think Yassin is right there in that mix where he's a top 40 guy right. who, you know, some teams, de depending on the type of corner they're looking for, might have him a little higher. Right. Some might have him a little lower. But I think in the top 40, top 45 range is accurate for Where's him. Your, what's your concern of Greedy Williams? I just think he's slight. He's, he's small. Yeah, like I, I'm. I don't I mean the length thin. and all that, yeah. and I mean well, is that he, which you know, it. Hey, Connor Williams, right? Like you can right. you can bulk up a little bit, but he has a slight frame. He is not a physical. Yeah. Uh, which I will give him credit. I do think he's a willing tackler. Again, I'm not talking about his mindset. He's just yeah. he is not a big guy at yeah. the NFL level, at least. I mean, does he not play big to you? I think I think that remains to be determined. And look, I know he was a lockdown guy in college, yeah. but I don't know that 
you're going up against guys that are going to challenge you game in, game out. Did like you that. have the same concerns about him of him as of maybe a Mo Claiborne? I just thought Mo's bigger. I th- I just thought Mo was uh, hidden by how good the rest of that secondary was. To be honest with you, uh, and like that's and you know you flip on the tape. God, we're talking like seven years ago at this no, point. I'm just, yeah, I'm just trying to no, get an idea. Because LSU corners, we tend to kind of, you know, we, it's either Patrick Peterson Mo, or Mo, was, or Cla- Mo Claiborne. Mo was playing with literally like four guys who were still in the NFL. Like he was across from Pat Pete for a year. He yeah. had Tyron Matthew back there with him. Eric yeah. Reed was in that secondary. Sure. Uh, so I just, I just didn't trust that he had been – through the fires, you know, that you would prefer to be a top 10 pick at the time. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to say like greedy is not going to be a good player. And yeah. then he's certainly like, he's going to be a top 15 pick yeah. if I had to guess, but I do wonder about his frame. I That's have fair. Murph. I have Murphy of Washington. I, I think just seeing enough LSU games, I have a higher opinion. And this, this is anecdotal. This is purely anecdotal. I haven't watched, but I have a higher or I had a higher opinion of Tredavious White coming out than I do of Greedy Williams. Which, so yeah, I, I think there's there's a lot of mixed opinions on Greedy. Um, some think he might be a late first rounder. Some think he's a top fifteen guy. Um, we'll see how he is. Does is, the is, is is people going to talk about him because of the length? Is that going to well, be the length and the athleticism? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think he has the play personality for the corner position. Um, he definitely has that. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, really, just what you <coughs> what you don't love about him is. Uh, he's not, you know, super twitchy where, you know, yeah. it's just it's really fluid. See, that's what I see with the Murphy kid from Washington. Yeah. I see I see a little bit more of a twitchy guy. But also, yeah, m- smaller package. Yeah. So, you know, you 5'10". Right. You kind of weigh yeah. the and we'll see what the length is. Is he, yeah. you know, 29 and a half yeah. or, you know, we'll, we'll uh Boy, if it's that, then I'm going off the the, the film shows me one thing. Right. But I'm seeing a competitive guy, though. Yeah, and it, it, you know, I mean, no offense to the Pac-12, but they just it wasn't a good conference this year. Yeah, and you know, compared to the SEC, so it, it's uh, it's you know, these are all factors you have to weigh. Uh, but I think you know, back to the Yasin, I think yeah, he's. Yeah, I was trying to I was trying to get an idea if like right, okay, we're talking up. about I'm, I'm talking about top corners. Yeah, is this is Yasin going to put himself at the end of the day? You know, is the Temple tape, the Senior Bowl, and Combine going to put him in the mix? With these other corners, I guess that's what I'm trying to drive at right now. I don't think so because I think he's probably going to run a four-five-two. You know, I don't think he has like great long speed. Okay, I think he's a four-four-eight to four-five-two guy. Okay, and for a corner position, which right. is a stopwatch position, right? That's some teams are going to be turned off by that. You know, at, at least in terms of him being a top twenty guy, top tw- a top thirty guy. Um, but in the second round, psh, yeah, get him on my team. So yeah. I mean, that's just my guess at this point. Mm-hmm. But we'll see how he does at the combine. Maybe he'll surprise us. Which that will. That's and all respect in the world of the Senior Bowl. I love coming here, but that's something like I always have to guard against when we come down here. Is well, it's because these of the are, competition. Well, plus these are the guys you're watching. Like, right, you, you can only watch what's in front of you. Right. So I'm, you know, we were we we were in love with Braxton Miller at the end of Senior Bowl practices one year, and Qu- uh, Quentin Rollins was yeah. another guy we yeah. really liked after the Senior Bowl. And they're good players. Quentin Rollins was drafted highly, but. Yeah. You, you know, there are other more talented players that are going to be in the mix when you get done with the senior bowl. Guys, if we should fall in love with one of ability to evaluate, should we fall in love with the combine or the senior bowl? You know, both have their merits. Because uh, when you look at the senior bowl, it's the final time we get to see these guys in pads. That's, uh, that's what I'm, yeah. I got, I, well, that's the senior bowl. The senior bowl is the answer, but the guy, not all of them, but a lot of the guys playing here are just simply not as good as the underclassmen. I mean, the top tier underclassmen. Right. Well, and that's it. And I, on a, a lot of times I learn more at the Combine just because we have a chance to talk to them. You right, know, we have right, a chance right. to uh, get to know them better. And then, you know, just getting the quantitative data to back up what you've watched the last yeah. six to ten months yeah. is really beneficial. Because if something doesn't match up, if, you know, Rocky Sin goes out and mm-hmm. runs a 4-3-8, what did, I, what, what did I miss? Hey. Yeah. I need yeah. to go back to the tape and figure out, okay, was, yeah. is he just, you know, stopwatch fast and right. not field fast right. or you know maybe i didn't give enough credit in terms of just the the long speed so you know, the combine they, they both have their merits I, don't, I mean i really don't know how you would rank them because mm-hmm. i can make a strong case for both i don't want to put you on the spot dane but i see a couple of uh house housekeeping tidbits coming across here what we got uh, well, I heard Donald Donald Parham got hurt. Yes. Uh, he's being replaced by UCLA. It's like an ankle injury. For, he's the yeah. tight end from Stetson. 
He's being replaced by UCLA tight end Caleb Wilson. And then this sucks. Uh, y'all's guy, Bruce Anderson, yes. is, I guess, out as well. Oh. Who is that uh, serious? Poor, poor Bruce. He, uh, he was not a good practice for him yesterday. Oh, really? In pass protection. He was. See, that's some of the things we were worried about of him a little bit. Yeah. Though. And, you know, it, and I wrote in my practice report how Wes Hills, the slippery rock running back, yeah. was yeah. one of the winners yesterday because. Yeah. The one on one stuff you saw? Well, uh, yeah. Carrying the ball, catching the ball, and then blocking. Yeah. He looked pretty good. Right. Meanwhile, uh, Armstead from Temple right. couldn't catch the ball. It was bad. Right. North Dakota State, Bruce Anderson, couldn't block a lick. It right. was bad. Okay. So it really like made Wes Hills look a lot better uh, yeah. playing or practicing next to those two guys. Did something happen to Anderson? I don't know. I didn't see. Okay. Um, I no. That's – I maybe his pride. I would say maybe, maybe his feelings were hurt. Yeah, uh, it's possible. Well, uh, what, I know um, about the ankle with uh, Parham. Darren uh, Darren Hall from Pitt is replacing Anderson. Mm-hmm. It sounds like strong guy. You, you you mentioned Dane some of the you, on your tweets. So you're f- kind of saying keep an eye on a USC offensive tackle. Yeah, uh, Chuma Adoga. Who if you're a team that needs a tackle. Yeah, you know, I mean, everybody needs a tackle, but this kid. He's showing some really nice footwork from yeah. what I've seen so he far. He flashed on Tuesday, and then Wednesday was more of the same. And, you know, he's a little shorter than you want, right. but he's got long arms. Right. Uh, now, the placement uh, of the punch and, and, you know, when he extends, that needs some work. Right. But when you focus on his lower body. His feet looked, re- I mean, really, really light-footed yeah. guy. Yeah, and, it, and it's natural. It's not forced. Right. You know, he, he, he reaches the corner very well, can cut off that speed. Uh, and I think he has some core power to him where, mm. you know, he, you don't see him getting jostled um, at, at the contact point. Right. You know, you see him holding up well, using that length to his advantage. Uh, it has some flexibility to right. him. So he's a guy coming out of this week based on these two practices, Penny Hart and this USC tackle, two of the biggest winners clearly for me. Yeah, okay, a couple guys right now. I know we've got a game and a practice left. Is there anybody – we could we could talk about the quarterbacks because that hasn't been as uh, probably hasn't been as good a group. But let's focus on some else because we did quarterbacks yesterday. Mm-hmm. We kind of talked. Is there another group that you've kind of said, boy, I need to go back, or maybe I didn't feel as good about these guys now as I did coming into this practice? Uh, who do I feel about? Who I feel better about or wor- worse about? Worse about a bit. Is there anybody that, that, yeah. that just really hasn't? Some of these corners. Um, you know, I I really like Isaiah Johnson. Who we talked about. Yeah. You know, tall, long. Right. But, right. You know, it, when he plays press and he can turn and run, right. it, it looks pretty good because right. he's such a, a, a fast guy. But right. when he plays off coverage, it's, it's bad because his, his feet, his yeah. footwork, the technique, the lower body technique. Right. And it, this is a tall, long guy right, exactly. that teams so are looking at, right? He's, I mean, basically what the tape is telling me uh, is – he needs to be play press man coverage. You know, you can't trust him at off. You can't trust him in zone. Right. You can't trust him to really be anywhere except nose to nose with a wide receiver where he can get physical, use that length, uh, and then use that speed to carry receivers deep. Uh, so I thought he had a uh, up and down practice. Chris, uh, Chris Boyd from Texas, same thing, where when he presses, he looks natural. He looks comfortable. He can use the sideline to his advantage. But when you ask him to play off, Donald Parham got him really good. Yeah. Uh, on a just a simple, it was a post route. Um, you know, he showed a little patience at the top, and uh, Boyd bit on it, couldn't recover. Uh, so Boyd, same kind of similar deal. Press man, okay, d- does an okay job when he plays off the line of scrimmage, and he's forced to kind of you know break down the receiver, anticipate the route. It, it, that's where he really struggles. Yeah, these these teams all looking for big, tall, long guys now. Yeah. yeah. And it, but he's telling you all these guys do is play, can play press man. Is that just a concern for you right now? I mean, you well, want a little bit more well-rounded guys playing. I mean, you want to get some guys that could drive out of off coverage and stuff like that. It's not a it's not a concern. Not or, a deal killer for you. Well, it's it's January, so no, no, yeah. and I wouldn't say I'm concerned. Um, but it is interesting, and that's you know you gotta you gotta dive deeper into those guys because I remember oh man who was the. Uh, who was the kid out of Clemson a couple years ago? Uh, I think the Tankers- Han- uh, Tankersley. Tankersley, yes. Oh, yeah. we I ta- almost got it right. We talked about him ad nauseum. All he did was play press man. That's all yeah. he could do. Yeah, that's and, all he could do. And the Cowboys had no interest at the end of the day because that's all that they felt he could do. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, that is that is an element of this where you got to dive into these guys' strengths and weaknesses because – he might fit the bill in the sense that he's a corner. He'll he'll be available for you. But if he doesn't fit what the Cowboys want him to do, they're not gonna they're not gonna be interested. Yeah, I think that's an important distinction. Before we hit the break, though, uh, kind of couple. It, 
people were asking about a couple of the big the Big Twelve d- these defensive ends, mm. Texas and TCU Is having it, good days yesterday. I, I thought LJ Collier had a a pretty good uh, practice, following up a good practice on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, really like how he uses his length, where mm-hmm. he can both in the pass rush drills right. and the run blocking drills. Uh, he did a really nice job using that length, detaching from blocks, there you go. and making a play. Yeah, I, I thought he, you know, power. Uh, he saw some uh, quickness, some bully mentality. So, uh, yeah, I think L.J. Collier has definitely uh, come here to Mobile, and he's turned some heads. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, these people again, once again, looking for those guys. Do you feel like the? You feel like though a, a really a a guy that an edge rusher that 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 can have success overall. I mean, does his tape show that? Yeah, I think so. I, I think he. I mean, you're talking about him being able to detach and things like right. that. That leads you to believe that he could that he could rush. But is there is there something holding him back there? Well, he's not a twitchy guy. He's not, uh, you know, Ben Bonagu, the other TCU. Yeah. Uh, you know, he was more of that speed demon off the edge where Collier is more of the, uh, you know, he doesn't have that type of juice, but right. he's not a bad athlete by any means. Right. Um, so you're saying we got to go to TCU's pro day now is what we got to do. Might have to do that. That's right. <laughs> See how he does. Yeah. yeah. He, but he's, uh, he's a good player, and he's having a good week. I mean, Charles Amenahu from Texas. Amenahu, yeah. Who, you, you were raving about the link to this guy. That's. Yeah, that's I think I've seen more questions and comments about that dude than anybody I, just from fans. I yeah, mean. when he's in his car, he can change both mirrors, <laughs> both side view mirrors with that length. Uh, he's just he's and, and here during the like the one on ones, they've been lining him up basically the same way they did at Texas, where he's mm. over the guard, oh, okay. over the B gap, you yeah. know, and so oh yeah, playing an under tackle kind of like right? right, and so that's been interesting, and he's he's done a nice job. He r- steamrolled Michael Dieter on Tuesday, and Dieter this basically the second round, maybe the first, maybe the best guard in the draft. Senior, senior best guard, senior guard, best senior yeah. guard from yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah, see, that conversation is going to change. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like it, he's the best guard here. And same thing. Uh, yeah. But he Good did the same thing yesterday. He steamrolled Michael Dieter again. So back maybe to Michael back Dieter is, has some problems with power. Uh, I think it's more just the length. You yeah, know, like you know, he His, he's the, the way he's able to get on him. Right, knock down. He needs to knock down the hands. Yeah. you know, do a better job fending off because you know with a man who you know he's going to use that length right. because it's it's such a weapon for him and mm-hmm. he just he did not make the proper adjustments based off of Tuesday's practice. We'll see what he does on Thursday. One more question before we get out of here, though, then. The linebackers. Anybody standing out for you on the linebacker side of things? Um, who did I like? Uh, the Notre Dame kids, anything you like know, that? He was okay. I thought uh, Terrell Hanks has been a nice, done a nice job. New Mexico State. Right. Um, Deshaun Davis from Auburn had a few nice reps. He's the one that got Bruce Anderson in those, you know, the pass rush drills. Right. Uh, that Bruce Anderson couldn't stop him, so I, I thought he he handled himself well. Um, what are some of these other linebackers? Um, oh, Bobby Okariki, I thought he did a nice job. Yeah, Stanford, right? Right, using that length. Um, David Long from West Virginia, more of the same. Yeah, ha- yeah, my guy my Long, he's just not long enough. Exactly, exactly. that's the problem with him, right? <laughs> that there. is the problem with him. That uh, is the problem with him. But yo, know, I thought he, uh, he he did a nice job. It's just yeah, you worry about the size, and it's something that will. Follow him throughout the process and really throughout his NFL career. All right. When we come back, we're going to hit to your questions here. We're going to hit a little Twitter on the 20, so stay tuned. If you're like me and you love... I mean, if you have a... ...thing, then cutting the cord is scary. But then I found out I could switch to DirecTV now and still get the live sports I love. No satellite needed, no bulky hardware, no annual contract. Just... Get the live sports you love. Try DirecTV now for $10 a month for three months. Visit directtvnow.com. DirecTV now. More for your thing. That's our thing. Use code Real Deal. Limited time. Price for a little, little package. After three months, renews monthly at full price. Currently minimum $40 unless canceled. Prices may change. New subscribers only. Cancel any time. Content varies by package and may be limited. Restrictions apply. It's time for tailgating with the OtterBox boys. The OtterBox that builds those crazy protective phone cases? Yup. And now they're changing the side dish game with the OtterBox Trooper Soft Cooler. Lightweight, mobile, and leak proof. Trooper is perfect for blitzing a crowded parking lot with a Frito pie. Amazing. Hey, you think I could fit my seven-layer salmon salad into the Trooper cooler? Yep, but please don't. And that's been Tailgating with the OtterBox Boys. Learn more about the Trooper soft coolers at otterbox.com. While a player could look good on paper, it's when he's out on the field that you really find out what he's made of. That's why the Cowboys rely on more than just stats and scouting reports when building their team. When picking a tractor, it's why you should rely on more than just specs and features. You've got to take it out and put it to the test. The Cowboys did when they named John Deere their official tractor. Experience one for yourself. Visit myjohndeeredealer.com football. 
It can be hard to find the right resource for learning about important financial matters. You search how to build savings, you end up reading about the one weird ingredient from supermarkets that can make you taller. That's why Bank of America built BetterMoneyHabits.com, a safe little corner of the internet for answering your financial questions. Full of simple videos and tips, Better Money Habits can show you how to make the most of your money without resorting to random searches that always seem to lead to unbelievable photos of childhood stars grown up. To learn more, visit BetterMoneyHabits.com. Essilor has been helping Cowboys fans see better since 1972 so they don't miss a moment on the field. Get glasses with Essilor's best vision, clarity, and protection with the Essilor Ultimate Lens Package. Three innovative technologies in one lens. For a limited time, you can double your lenses for free when you purchase the Essilor Ultimate Ultimate lens package and get a second pair of frames. Find a participating eye care professional and details by visiting EssilorUSA.com. That's EssilorUSA.com. Terms and conditions apply. This is the DallasCowboys.com draft show. The Cowboys are on the clock. Back here with the draft show presented by Miller Lite. We appreciate Miller Lite. We appreciate Essilor. We appreciate all the sponsors that come on with us and and allow us to come to Mobile and do uh, this job. Uh, once again, you've got David Hellman, Dane Brugler, Kent Garrison, executive producing. Um, guys, when uh, today is – I think it's a big day for me because, I, I like Dane was talking about, I two days now of practice, well, I want to see – I want to see. I, mean, I just want to see some football. Honestly, yeah, I, like, I, I, this, I'm with you on this that. This has been a weird Senior Bowl. So I mean, yeah. like, you know, you, I mean, y'all know the drill. Like yeah. when we get here, I'm on Jerry and Stephen Jones duty the first day we're here. Right. I never get to watch practice on the yeah. first day, and then the second day we didn't get to go. So like, right. I have not seen a rep of practice yet. I'm looking forward to today just so I can actually get my bearings with these players. Yeah, you could sit down and really scout them I, up. Today, I, huh? I, I, I'll be. Full transparency, like I know next to nothing about the guys at this at the Senior Bowl this year, which upsets me. But what are you going to do? Well, uh, knowing next to nothing, then we'll get into some of these. How about these qu- these questions that we have here? I got me. I got a, which I hate to give him credit. Th- that Bobby Belt guy, he's he he can be smart sometimes because this is something I've been wondering about all yeah. week, and it's a good question for yeah. you, Brian. Which is when a team meets with a player at the Senior Bowl. Is that indicative of interest or due diligence? And I'm just curious about this and the how, the role it plays in the process. You know, Bobby and I have a lot of conversations because there's several players that he knows that the Cowboys are interested in yeah. and he has contact with. Right. And I think anytime you meet with a player, it, it and I hate this because it's not. I don't not. I don't want to ride the fence. But it is about due diligence. Right. No. It is, it is yes. about due diligence. No, absolutely. Which, uh, and it, it, don't it, ride the fence yeah, all you want. No, no. It, it is about due diligence. But it, uh, but there is some interest there. You're not going to talk to somebody that you don't have an interest in. But, but, but it's also your job to where if something comes up, if something comes up in a draft meeting, you want to be able to tell yeah. Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones and Jason Garrett that, hey, I talked to this kid – and this is his background. Like when Dane gives you the background uh, about uh, your sin, rock your sin, you know, yeah. a temple, and tells you all the places he's been, that's a scout. Yeah. He's scouting for you right there because he's explaining to everybody out there. But, but the fact that he gets to sit down and it visits with these guys helps him with that part of the, 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 the pie. You've been here on the personnel side. Like, how yeah. does we know all, we know all the rules for the yeah. combine? You get X amount of formal interviews. Right. How well, does it used to be a free for all? So in, in, I miss those days in Mobile. Yeah, you know, you basically teams are allowed to talk to these guys from like 7 p.m. until 10. Yeah, PM. you just kind of grab the kids, you grab them as you go. Yeah, go in the lobby there. Or you set things up with them. Maybe on the after practice, you go up and say, "Hey, listen, uh, can we?" Take you for ten minutes and but visit you, with you. You're so you're probably doing I don't know fifteen a night, trying ten yeah. a night. Something yeah, you like just that. divide the scouts all divide up. Which I, I it's interesting to me because y- you're right. You don't talk to a guy without being interested, right? But at this point in the process, it doesn't mean a lot to me that the right. Cowboys the Cowboys talk to X. Yeah, of course they did. Like yeah. they're here all week. Right. That's that's what they're supposed to do. Like. Right. When we're talking about okay, now this guy's got a formal interview at the combine. Now, now my if alarm. You only allowed sixty off. visits at the combine yeah. out of three hundred and how many players? Twenty five. Three hundred and thirty six. Okay, three thirty six. It's worth if you if you limit it to sixty. Yeah. Now you're really you're really they 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 I could say it's it's more about due diligence at the All Star Games than yeah. it is at the combine. If if the Cowboys are talking to somebody at the Senior Bowl, yeah. 
okay, I'm 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 glad I heard that, but like I I don't really care that what much. What would be your go to question if you could ask a kid a question in any setting? You know, I think it really depends on the player because there's something you know, like each player there's probably something different that I want to know. Like, um, are you more about mental makeup or more about uh, asking him a question? Maybe are you going to ask him a question about something you saw on tape? Like, hey, in that Nebraska game. Right, exactly. Bring well, up what a play. were you thinking in that Nebraska game when you let that guy get past you like that? Yeah. Right, because I, I think a few things. I mean, you get, It takes your mental makeup. The guy might be, he right. might be real honest and explain, uh, right. hey, this is what I did. I made a mistake. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. yeah. I, thought, I was in cover two, and I thought that. You know, right, like, right. Yeah, but it also it shows, like, you know, did they actually remember it? Yeah, or absolutely. are they, you know, just kind of. You know, just spitballing some generalities, yeah. and yeah. they don't really uh, yeah. remember what you're talking about, and mm-hmm. how much do they care about? You know, because if, if they were beat, I, I want a guy that's where it, it's sticking right here. Yeah, it so, still hurts him. Yeah, so they're they're thinking about it. Uh, but yeah, and I'm I'm a big fan of setting up players for the future, where I'm going to ask them about a certain play, or I'm going to ask them to hey, go back and um, you know watch that Temple tape, and you did this, this, and this, and then. When I talked about the combine, or mm-hmm. I talked to him about a pro day, mm-hmm. bringing that up again and kind of you know just testing. Okay, did you go back and look at that, or mm-hmm. you know just right. testing him that way, you know, like a, a long term type right. of thing. Now, th- there's so many things that you can do in terms of the psychology of it, um, and it's it, it's it's just it's that's why scouts have to be investigators, psychologists. Yeah. I mean, there's so many different steps to being a scout that uh, can be important. Family questions off limits. What we've seen this in the past there's now. Nothing off limits. There's nothing off limits. Okay, but okay, I, but know, there's been some questions. Try to be some try to be respectful. Like uh, that, that. I mean, do we have to sure. be respectful? Well, to a point, um, you know, I, I think that there's been some guys that have asked some pretty. Oh yeah, guys like pretty well, we, Jeff ev- Ireland. Every yeah, Jeff Ireland springs immediately to mind. Uh, Des Bryant. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, that's yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, there was the whole controversy with Darius Geis. I still yeah. don't – I don't. did we ever get to the bottom of whether that question actually got asked? Yeah. I don't know. Probably did. If it got if out, not, it if, probably it did. It probably did. And yeah. that's – yeah. I yeah. mean, clearly nothing is off limits. Yeah. I don't think all of it is important, but teams are going to do what they want to do. You look for a kid's reaction to those kind of questions? Yes and no. I mean, I mean part of it is, you know, I want to know, okay, you know, was your dad in your life? Yeah. Was, uh, you know, who, who raised you? Yeah. You know, who's uh, – you know, one, one big thing that I want to know with players is – their mental toughness. And so mm. I want to know, okay, what have you had to go, go through in your life? Absolutely. You know, have you been handed everything? Yeah. Or, you know, have you had to face adversity? Yeah. If so, what's the biggest adversity you've had to face in your life? And, you know, for some guys, there's some heavy stuff. There's a lot of heavy stuff. Yeah. These so, kids. But for a lot of these guys, kids have been through a lot. Yeah. A lot more Absolutely. than me, you know. And, Trust and that, me. that helps shape who they are now and who they're going to be, uh, you know, five years from yeah. now and, you know, every, everything in between. So, yeah, that's something you're investing. I, I know it seems very – and sensitive mm-hmm. uh, sometimes, but as a general manager, you have to treat these these players as as assets, yeah. as you know, uh, basically a stock that you're buying and selling. And uh, you know, I know that's insensitive. These are people and uh, you know, all that, but that's just that's that's how you have to treat it. Scouts are very compassionate generally. If you don't lie to them, mm-hmm. you tell them the truth and be upfront. And you don't, and they, and don't make them have to go dig up stuff on you. Mm-hmm. But if you're very upfront with, pl- with the players, uh, I remember a kid, uh, Mac from uh, Miami, was a safety. He told me he had an alcohol problem. The kid told me 12:30 at night at the combine. He he says, "Hey, I have an alcohol problem," you know. And it, it and it, sure enough, he did. You know, he was in the league for yeah. two, three years, but mm-hmm. he had an alcohol problem. And, you know, when I went back with my guys at the Packers, I said, this kid told me he's got an issue, guys. We need to look at this if we're interested in this guy. But you know what? I mean, I appreciate and I think I have more compassion to the player that tells me the truth and doesn't make me have to come back another time at a pro day or a visit and say, hey, you lied to me, man. Well, yeah, and a lot of times it'll be – switched where you go do yeah. digging first right. and you find something right. and then when you kind of hint at it to yeah. the player see what he says and then he like you know lies about it yeah. or doesn't bring you know and yeah. you know high, any problems in high school yeah. you, you know any arrests yeah. or anything yeah. like that no no i was good but you talked to his high school coach and you found yeah. out you know he got in trouble busted for yeah. underage or they, and it's not so much what he did you know cuz i don't really don't care you know set, we all made mistakes at 17 it's more the fact that now, as a 22-year-old, he's lying about yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Get to those questions, though. Good, good conversation oh, about that. Oh, that was good. Yeah, um, good conversation about that. What do you got on the question side of it, things? This is, this is interesting to me because – so Trey's got a question 
prop like in terms of his college career, probably like the most famous guy here, and we haven't talked about him one time. Trace McSorley. Mm. What's I mean? What's the story? Like, shout it, out to Dana Burns, Penn State. Grad. Is is he draftable? Like, I mean, like I, I lean toward no because we haven't said his name once in three shows. Where yeah. do you see, where do you see McSorley? You know, I'll tell you what I see of the kid. Every time I've ever watched Penn State play. I kind of felt like they were in the game because of him. Yeah, no, like he, oh, there, yeah. I mean, if he you want to talk about, if you want to talk about traits of a guy that's a winner, Which, he's got no, winning traits. He and in a terrible situation, he that, clearly has that Bill O'Brien and them turned around. Just from watching him play college football, he appears to have it. But again, that goes back to my point: we are not talking about him, so yeah. that he must have some serious flaws as a quarterback. Well, it's very cliche, but he's a gamer. You know, like that's uh-huh. just what he is. Yeah. He's uh, shout out Dak Prescott. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but McSorley's, you know, he's six foot even, two hundred two pounds. Um, he has a okay arm, not a great, yeah. not even a, a above average arm. He's got an okay arm, um, and a lot of what he did at Penn State was because of using his legs. Yeah, uh, that toughness that he showed, mm-hmm. and resiliency. Uh, I just don't know how that's going to translate. I don't know. I to me, there were better quarterbacks. Um, than him to invite here because mm-hmm. I don't think McSorley's getting drafted. Maybe a coach falls in love with the moxie and you know, the way he handles himself, but of all those guys yeah. last year, you know, those guys that we were talking about in the sixth, seventh round, mm-hmm. Toledo, uh, you know, Mike White. <laughs> yeah, no, Mike White. I mean, I was, I was not talking about, I talked about Mike White. I know I mean, you would have drafted Mike White in the but third no, round. But those guys that were, those guys that we were kind of banging around at the end of the draft, this guy, not as good as those guys that, I don't think so. No, okay. I don't. And okay. I don't see it as a passer. Not enough to, uh, at least not enough. That's going to give me optimism. I don't know. He's he's an undrafted or a priority free agent. Okay, a good player who's going to get a chance. But you know, if you know white side and guys like that last year, you right? Know, those guys we were all talking. If about. If you told me that he's going to be uh, make the final cuts next year at a training camp, would it totally surprise? I'd be more surprised if he got drafted yeah. than if he actually made the final cut as a second or third receiver. Just because once he gets to training camp and it, like coaches have a chance to really second or third receiver or quarterback. Quarterback. Sorry, I'm sorry, like, sorry. whoa, we're talking yeah. position my change. Fault, fault. Okay. Uh, once coaches have a chance to, you know, spend a couple of days with him and, you know, or a couple of weeks with him, it's going to be hard for them to cut a guy like McSorley. Yeah, the guy so. at San Francisco. Oh, your boy uh, Mullins. Mullins. Yeah. Mullins. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm broadcasting the game, and Nick Mullins is driving it down the field and go, yeah. the go ahead. Then he did it in the regular season. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, all but, right. But the guys that end up, I, I think the one trait that, again, this is not studying him on film. But just TV oh. scouting, he, he has keeps it. them in games. He has it. That's all I know. But That's all I know. And he, you might be absolutely right about the young you man. you got to have both to have be both. a highly picked player. Yep. Uh, all right, Mr. Ohio, Joseph has a question. Mr. Ohio. J, uh, Joseph. O-H. Wants, he wants to, exactly. He wants to know I-O. about you got to finish it. Why do you finish it? Sorry. Joseph wants to know about Terry McLaurin, who I've, heard, uh, I've been okay. seeing his name yeah. crop up a lot in the last couple of days. He was another one of my – "Quote unquote risers," uh, based on what he's done at practice. Ohio State receiver for anybody. Yeah, um, yeah. And should know by the O H I O. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's a, a vertical receiver who has speed and get deep. Um, you know, stack the corner, win deep. It, what I'm really impressed with is not that initial acceleration, but the secondary burst that he shows. Mm. It's almost like you know he lulls corners to sleep a little bit because he's. He, I mean, he's good speed Smooth, off the line, huh? but then he he has an extra gear downfield where he hits it. And he just he has a little bit left in the tank, and he can get you over the top. So that factored in with he's a big time special teams player. Uh, uh, he, you talk to Urban Meyer about him; he'll mm, he'll gush that's Urban about Meyer's. That was his baby. Special that's it. teams. What he does on special teams is big, and so you know, as a gunner on different coverages, he that's where he's really gonna be able to impress teams. Um, so uh, Terry McLaurin, mid round pick. He's going to be in this league for a long time because of what he can do on special teams and, you know, a, a pretty good fourth receiver who will battle to be more than that. Better Noah Brown? Different, but, I mean, His yeah. build is not the same as Noah's, right? Right. He's, yeah. he's, he's like, kind of like a faster. special teams guy, tough guy maybe, you know? Yeah, he, well, he's definitely a tough guy. Uh, but I think his speed is what really – separates him okay uh we'll see what he runs Fourth in the round. Combine, i don't think he's big enough that anybody's gonna ask him to set the edge no, <laughs> no but i'm just saying ohio state i know ohio state but receiver I'm just, that, noah brown is 6'2 220 that's all yeah. like he's yeah. pretty gigantic I'm just for saying a ohio state receiver yeah yeah special teams guy okay uh we got time for any more absolutely go ahead 
Uh, I, I'm going to ask this just for the for the comment or the the name, which is Combat Wombat. <laughs> cool. Uh, we Combat ta- Wombat. We've talked like about that. We've talked about Adderley. What mm-hmm. uh, What about the other safeties that are here? Any anybody? Uh, another one of the risers, based off the tape from Wednesday's practice, was uh, Darnell Savage from Maryland, who mm. I I'm a big fan of his. I I, I think he's really underrated because he's he's smaller, uh, smaller safety. But he was one of the few guys that did a nice job against Penny Hart. Uh, did not get you know one on one. Yeah, he did a nice job. Uh, he has that reactive quickness where he can uh, close and uh, make a play. So I Darnell Savage. In a, I think he's the ideal nickel. Maybe not ideal because he doesn't have ideal height or length. But in terms of his athleticism, he has ideal athleticism for the nickel. Uh, plus, I think he has the mindset because he'll come up and hit you. He can, uh, you know, he's used to playing in space. So Darnell Savage, to me, he's a day two prospect. Um, he has a chance to be one of the top five safeties drafted this year. See the same height and weight as Adderley. Adderley's 5'11", almost six foot, yeah. wow, one ninety five. Regular measure. Savage is five eleven even. I think five eleven even, one ninety nine. Yeah. yeah, so he's he's about an inch smaller. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the length is not as re- re- he doesn't have as long arms, but uh, yeah. So it's not we're not talking about a huge difference here. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Um, Matt. Oh, I like this question from that Matt. Was a simple one. Fullbacks, he, here or in the draft. We're just, we're just. The Cowboys are a team without a fullback, and they didn't get a lot of production from it anyway. Yeah, we had dinner with the Raider guys last night. We, we were, were, we were having, we were having fullback stories. We were swapping full. We were like, oh, wait a minute, our guy our was guy, good, uh, and yeah, 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 like yeah, they yeah. want their guy back, yeah. and we want our guy back. Yeah, exactly. That's okay. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, the fullbacks here haven't done much, but Trevon Wesco from West Virginia, who is basically a tight end, but he's they're, they're using him as more of a... 277 pounds, I saw. He's a big boy. Uh, yeah. They're using him as more of a, a fullback here. and he, 270. Thank you, Brian. 270. He doesn't have a huge catch radius, but he's... Uh, he battles, uh, you know. I mean, he he at the top of routes. I mean, he's trying to gain separation, and I, there's something to Travon Wesco. I don't know. I I don't know that he's gonna be a, a high draft pick at all. Like top, I don't know. If he's gonna go top five rounds, but once you get in the later rounds, mm-hmm. Travon Wesco's interesting. Is he like? Is he really like drafting a long snapper? Uh, you know I, what I'm saying when you always draft that long snapper in the sixth, seventh round. Right, but I mean with with Wesco because he was a tight end at West Virginia, right. playing fullback here. I think you know he gives you a little bit of versatility where he can do maybe a little both, be that mm-hmm. H back. Uh, just he's going to be specialized because so the you know, offenses view the fullback position so differently yeah. around the league. Zach Lyons, yeah, so, you're not kidding. You know, it's going to be – he's not going to be for everybody. Right. You know, there might only be four teams that like him. Right. So it's just a matter of do one of those four teams have a, a, a draft pick in the sixth or seventh round that they're willing to use on a player Would like that. Would you rather spend a draft pick on a really, really good fullback or a really, really good kicker? Mm. And I'm – like, like – I'm Kicker. I, kicker. I think you're right, which I, I was going to say, like, l- let's leave, like, Dixon out of it. Like, he's a special case, clearly. Yeah. Like, you yeah, don't but, see but that think every about day. The, the, think about the, the kid that the, the – the Vikings took in the third round, Carlson. Yep. I mean, they they got rid of him. They dumped a third. Got or, Dan Bailey. Well, how about the? Um, I mean, they, they they. How about the Aguayo? The, Aguayo, yeah. Aguayo. The, kid, the Bucks traded up. That's which. See that that to, that scares the hell out of should. me. It, it should. It should scares the hell yeah. out of me to draft That's, a kicker. Like I that. would be totally fine drafting a kicker, but not until like the sixth round, because then like there's no pressure on a sixth round, or there shouldn't yeah. be at least. That Carlson guy. I mean, he made everything at Auburn. Yeah. He got to Minnesota. I mean, they're losing games because of him. Head games, man. Uh, Head games. It's a mental position, I guess. Uh, got one more? I do have exactly one Let's more. Let's go one more, and we've got to take a break, Which, and we'll come back and finish this thing up. Dan, you you got to do this for us, but Junior wants to know, like, what position group uh, Junior wants to know has disappointed you the most this week? He's going to tell you quarterbacks. Yeah, I think it's been the quarterbacks, and we know. talked about it yesterday, and, you know, watching the tape um, of Wednesday's practice, because that's what, you know, Tuesday you let them get acclimated to the situation, then Wednesday, okay, let's see you ramp it up. It wasn't – No elevations of games? Not really, and it wasn't, like, all, it just – completely terrible right but none of them impressed daniel jones threw two interceptions yeah uh one was just a bad decision that he right. forced uh this year adderley got him yeah uh the other one his receiver fell down and so uh, penn state corner got him um but you know a lot of the seven on seven drills and the team drills there's a lot of check downs a lot you know, sometimes mm. that's the best decision but you don't get anything out of it guys are getting scared a little bit they don't yeah, want, well, all, is, is the nerve starting to get to some of these guys i mean 
I'm watched, asking you a question. It's hard to answer. But watching but, yeah, the tape, okay. like a lot of these guys are covered. So, yeah. like, I mean, not all, not all the time, but some of the times. And so, they don't have the opportunity. I mean, they can't create a window that's not there. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't know if it's so much that they're getting a little skittish, but um, honestly, Jared Stidham made the best throw uh, of yesterday's practice. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was a simple ten yard out route to Anthony Johnson. Right. But it was the opposite hash, and uh, oh, yeah. he had a put perfect placement and timing on it so mm -hmm. Anthony Johnson could uh, make the throw along the sideline without the uh, defender undercutting it. So uh, Stidham had the best throw. Gar uh, I think uh, Minshew had a, a couple nice throws. But for the most part, it was a pretty blah practice. So Thursday, all right, quarterbacks, let's see what you got. All right, Thursday. Well, uh, we'll take our final break quickly and then come back, and we'll talk about what we're looking forward today in Thursday's practice. You got the draft show, so stay tuned. Essilor has been helping Cowboys fans see better since 1972 so they don't miss a moment on the field. Get glasses with Essilor's best vision, clarity, and protection with the Essilor Ultimate Lens Package. Three innovative technologies in one lens. For a limited time, you can double your lenses for free when you purchase the Essilor Ultimate Lens Package and get a second pair of frames. Find a participating eye care professional and details by visiting EssilorUSA.com. That's EssilorUSA.com. Terms and conditions apply. Do you want the most interesting, up-to-the-minute Dallas Cowboys news straight from the star in Frisco? How about exclusive and on-command? That's right, news and nuggets you can't find anywhere else. With our exclusive Cowboys content on Alexa, you can have all the answers, secrets, stories, and more. What's Stephen Jones thinking during a game? What's Joe Looney's favorite pregame meal? We take your questions to Cowboys players and coaches, and you can hear the answers directly back to you. Just say Alexa. Open Dallas Cowboys. If you're like me and you love... I mean, if you have a... Hi. ...thing, then cutting the cord is scary. But then I found out I could switch to DirecTV now and still get the live sports I love. No satellite needed, no bulky hardware, no annual contract. Just... Get the live sports you love. Try DirecTV now for $10 a month for three months. Visit DirecTVNow.com. DirecTV Now. More for your thing. That's our thing. Use code REALDEAL. Limited time. Price for a little, little package. After three months, we use monthly at full price. Currently minimum $40 unless canceled. Prices may change. New subscribers only. Cancel any time. Content varies by package and may be limited. Restrictions apply. A man's Stetson doesn't just protect him from life's elements. It projects an unstoppable and legendary spirit, just like the men wearing silver and navy on the field every Sunday. Since 1865, Stetson hats are American-made with pride right here in Texas. They are still the official crown of all self-respecting cowboys. And Stetson is proud to be on the field with America's team. Find Stetson hats in the pro shop or at Stetson.com today. Dr. Pepper is the one you crave. But how do you explain that craving? Imagine being shipwrecked on a desert island, alone. Glass-like curls of surf pound the shore with Dr. Pepper-colored waves. Surrounded by desire, but you can't drink it because it's the ocean. The fish live in there. The only thing you want is Dr. Pepper, and you can't have it. Now that is a Dr. Pepper craving. Dr. Pepper, the one you crave. This, this is the DallasCowboys.com Draft Show. The Cowboys are on the clock. Back here at the draft show from Mobile, Alabama. It's our final broadcast uh, for the week. Uh, then uh, next week, our next draft show will be Thursday uh, from the star in Frisco. We hope that you can join us then. We appreciate everybody out there that's been following along. Folks have been commenting uh, about the show, liking the show, favoring the show, whatever you've been doing, uh, following us on Periscope. We appreciate that as well. We, we've done it again. We don't dis discriminate. It's not all about Dallas Cowboys. We're going to talk about players. That's what we do here. So if your team needs, I'm going to just try to keep y'all somewhere yeah, in between the yeah, lines exactly, of the Cowboys. Exactly. We just we're going to try and you know, try and talk about as many players every week. So if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. It's great to have you. We hope to have you back, and uh, for our longtime listeners as well, we uh, we love you guys as well. Okay. Uh, I want to get into David. You said you wanted you had something you wanted. Yeah, to kind of I, get to I I thought of this. I think of this every year, and you know I I get it. The Senior Bowl. You know, you got to promote yourself. You right. got to remind people why this is important, and right. yada yada. So every year they've got promotional material everywhere. Obvi I mean, Baker Mayfield is everywhere this week, right. as he should be. Right. Uh, a couple years, I mean, Dak and Wentz. Uh, I remember Ziggy Ansah was all over the promotional material after he blew up. So I wanted to ask y'all if you had to guess when we come back here a year from now. Mm. Whose face are we going to see all over the posters, you know, and promotional material for the Senior Bowl? That's a good question. Sweat. 
Okay. That's, that is the one that jumps to my mind yeah, right I, away. I, I feel like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, to me, this is where, you know, you, you talk about Montez Sweat, the defensive end from Mississippi State. Mm-hmm. He's the one guy. I, I'm, I'm going to be fascinated to see it when it's all said and done when we get to these edge rushers and where they stack, you know, post-combine, getting into the draft. What people really, really feel about him. I, I, that guy to me at 6'6", 252 has got a ton of ability yeah. to rush the pass. And, and I think he's going to be the guy. Maybe we had Dak. You said Mississippi State guy. Quarterbacks, Quarterback, man. yeah. But it's all about the length with, yeah. with Sweat. Yeah. When he uses that length, yeah. he can be deadly. I, I, I'd, I'd probably go Daniel Jones. Um, Ooh. You know, I think it depends on where he goes. Daniel Jones goes to, you know, the Giants he's at six. He's a quarterback six. from Duke, Duke. Right? If right. he goes to the Giants at six and Eli Manning plays most of the year, then obviously that's not going to work. But if Daniel Jones goes to – Miami and they give Tannehill the boot or something like that and you know uh, Daniel Jones ends up having a decent rookie year then all of a sudden you know we can talk about him as being uh, a poster boy down here in Mobile. Where would Daniel Jones rank as far as those quarterbacks in last year's draft of the top guys? You love doing that. I do. I just want to see a little bit of a comparison if I could. Four? Four? After for me. I, uh, of, of, the, of the guys uh, of the Allens. So and, after, and, after and, Darnold, Rosen and Baker. Yeah. And I, right I after that, I would okay. go Jones. Because um, for me, I had three quarterbacks Damn. in the top ten last year. Right, right. That's Darnold, what I was, I was Baker, asking, yeah. and Rosen. All three were in the uh, – I considered top ten picks. And then there was a huge gap. And then I think I had Allen at, like, 30 overall and then Lamar Jackson at 32 overall. Yeah. I think Haskins and Daniel Jones would be somewhere in the middle. Um, I, I think the top three quarterbacks last year would be my top three quarterbacks this year. Well, I think they would be the top three quarterbacks in most draft classes. I, I mean, maybe. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I mean, Rosen, he has his up and downs. I'll be interested to see what Rosen does with this new coach. It's hard not yeah. to have hindsight with yeah. Baker. Of course. I, you know, I, 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 mean, oh, I yeah, was the one no. comparison. And again, if you believe my quarterback evaluations, you're probably going down the wrong road. It's true. You but suck at it. I do. I suck Paxton at it. Paxton Lynch, Joey Paxton. Harrington. No, but I, I've got, I got Mahomes right. You, I you fought did. Dana I'll give, Mahomes. I'll give you Mahomes. I fought Dana there Mahomes. I got that one right. But, the, but yeah, overall, I, I, I thought that Josh Rosen, I thought he was – Matt Ryan. I mean, I seriously thought – I mean, I, watching him play – He still I think, could be. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's be. why I want to see him play with this guy. Yeah. I think it – I think it, depending I, on where this, this quarterback goes from Duke. I did not – which, you know, we're just getting into the process. Like, I, I know the name, but I did not realize that he is that highly thought of, that you would take him right after those top three. Jones I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I think he's – he's just got a lot of – what you want. I take him ahead of Josh Allen. I take him ahead of Lamar Jackson and I'd feel better about long term. So depending the NFL. depending on the situation, you think there's a good chance he's starting a healthy amount of games next year. Depending on the situation, yeah. Okay. Um I, in my last mock draft, I had him going seven of the Jags. So, Damn. you know, it who knows are they gonna sign a, yeah. a Foles or a Flacco or yeah. you know, something like it we'll see what the Jags do, but they're gonna be in the quarterback market. So right. that's a potential landing spot. Mm-hmm. The Redskins, is Alex Smith coming back? Yeah, uh, uh, you know, Did you see his cast the other day? It like it looks like a submarine. There's so much metal on his yeah. leg. I feel yeah. bad for the guy. Yeah. The wild card in all this, of course, we go back to Kyler Murray. That's yeah. who's gonna fall in love with him, oh, who's gonna take him. We planned that out with the Raider guys last night. He's yeah. Oakland, pick twenty seven. Yeah. The Cowboys pick. Yeah, pick twenty seven, Kyler Murray. I'm make him call him my shot here. I just don't think he's gonna last that long. But who knows? Yeah. See, all it takes Probably with right. him is one one team to fall what in if love. Bruin takes him at four. That I said we talked about this last night. That would be kind of hard. Shock me. Yeah, yeah. it would shock me. I, just, I don't think I'm. Sh- I would be shocked. A no. Five nine quarterback going I'll, in the top. I'll five. put it this way: Do not be surprised where if he goes one or if he goes thirty. Yeah. Do not be surprised at it or anywhere You're in between. Just saying, that's gonna be the fun. Yes. That's gonna be the fun okay. first night for us in the draft. Do not be surprised if he uh, – at this point last year, we would have said it would be crazy for a six-foot quarterback to get a number one overall. You're right. He yeah. did. I'm telling you right now, do but not I be surprised at anything. Most of us most of us were pretty convinced Baker Mayfield was going to be a top ten pick at least. Oh, top Whereas ten. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, like, nobody can agree on Kyler Murray. Like, yeah. you know, some people yeah. are saying top five, and some people are saying not in the first round. That's yeah. what, it's, He's the ultimate wild card. Yeah. The, the – uh, I was just looking down at Periscope, and, and one of the questions, they wanted to know, Dane, if you could tell who are the top safeties in this year's draft. 
You talked about Adderley, right? Adderley's the top safety I in my opinion. I just saw that. just caught my eye. just wanted to make Deontay, some other names. Jonte Thompson from Alabama. Alabama. Um, you know, we'll see. He had such a good start to the year, then he kind of tailed off a little bit. I think his eye discipline needs work. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's not as I – mean, he's he's got good height and length, but mm-hmm. he's a little lean. Right. He's about 6'2", 199 pounds. So sure. I don't know. We'll see how he uh, – can he hold up? Because I think he has a physical mentality, but – can he actually hold up and run support? That'll be a big question. Um, after him, Taylor Rapp from Washington, I like a lot. Yep, absolutely. Uh, yeah. A guy we who is here, but we haven't had a chance to see him, Jonathan Abram from Mississippi State. Mississippi State, right. Uh, like him a lot. He's just a flying missile all over the place. Sure. Uh, really like his play personality and what he brings, uh, not only to the field, but also uh, just my locker room. And I, I think he's right. a good influence there. Yep. He, like he, he's he's married. Right. He's he's kind of advanced in his life. Sure. Um, so I think you're getting a mature player. Uh, Juan Thornhill. After that, um, Chauncey Gardner Johnson from Florida. So I think it's a it's not a bad safety group, but it's um, it's not great either. But it's it's a decent group where you can find starters. Top, the top. four or five guys, right? You yeah. Feel like? I, top at t- top seventy five picks. Right. You, you can be able to find a guy that's gonna be a nice contributor for you and mm-hmm. probably hopefully a starter. What are you expecting today from practice? Like I said, I just want to see some guys. Uh, I'm going to have my eyes. Is there eyes. a focus you're going to have on somebody today or a focus on a position? <sighs> Off the top of my head, I, I want to watch, and that's what I kept asking about it. I want to watch some of these offensive linemen. Um, Dillard, the kid from uh, Washington, State. Washington State. Right. I'm intrigued by that. I Like I said, I'm I'm intrigued by tackle being a need for this team, uh, for the Cowboys, I mean. Uh, some of these pass rushers um, – I don't want to watch Sweat because I don't want to be reminded that the Cowboys have no shot at drafting him. Right. Uh, I don't, hey, character stuff, you never know. All the way to 58. Randy, well, well, Randy, 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 yeah. Randy yeah. and literally. Yeah. I don't know. They, Montez Sweat might not go as early as some people think because of the background stuff, which, uh, okay. you know, it's people at Mississippi State will tell you he was great. But Hello, Bengals. You never yeah. know. So, <laughs> oh, God, we're going to do that again. Yeah. Um, Maybe maybe some corners. Uh, you know the kid from Texas. How do how do I say his name, Dane? Charles Amenahu. Yeah, Amenahu. I, I got to see this reach. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna try to look at you everything because one on one. I've seen so little this year that I'm just gonna try to watch as much as possible today. Yeah, and as I look down again on the periscope, you see Kent Garrison uh, producing on the fly the Andre Dillard uh, and where he's gonna go. You're right. I think the Cowboys do need an offensive tackle. It's Especially with what's going on with Cam Fleming, you may be in a, uh, Cam Fleming's a free agent. Yeah. Tyron Smith is, is exactly. you know wear and tear. Yeah. Lyle yeah. Collins is heading into a contract year. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah. and Andre Dillard, it's been. Yeah, I don't think he's been great, but he hasn't been terrible. It's been a little up and down for him. So yeah. if he caps off the week uh, with a good practice today, that'll be big for him. Because again, one of the storylines coming into the week. He's a potential first round pick. Mm-hmm. Can he get in that first round? He needed a big week uh, this week. I don't think that we've necessarily seen that yet. I still think he's a really good player. He's an NFL starter. Um, but a strong practice today would go a long way to kind of boost in his profile. What are you looking at there, Scout, man? Uh, well, unfortunately, I won't be able to watch the practices live, right. but I'll watch the, uh, the tape tonight. Yeah. So eager to see these quarterbacks. Yeah. Show me something. Yeah. You know, like finish strong and uh, specifically Drew Locke and Daniel Jones. Want to see them do well. Yeah. Uh, looking to see more of the Debo Samuel Rocky uh battle that's been uh, a, a common theme this week. Um, and just more in the trenches. Uh, the D-line's really had their way with the offensive linemen this right. so far through tr- two practices. Can the offensive linemen flip the script, play a little better? Um, so that's a few things I'll be looking at. I'm going to focus on that one-on-one, the pass rush drill, and try and do my best to focus. It's split. We have to focus on pass rush drill, and then you have to focus on one-on-one with the receivers and stuff like that. I want to see some of the offensive linemen come off the ball and block somebody today. Yeah. Yeah, I want to see some guys climb some guys. I'm a full pad you'll be able to do that. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks to everybody that was a part of it this morning. Uh, again, if you're if it's a uh, good morning to you or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world, we appreciate you guys. Uh, for my scouting buddies, David Hellman, for Dane Brugler, for Kent Garrison, executive producer, and Brian Bruss, we will see you Thursday. Next Thursday, draft show will be back in. Uh, we're going once a week, and so that will be the uh, – uh, the things that we work on. We're going to get you ready, study some more players, break this film down, have an opportunity to get back to Dallas, uh, to, uh, to excuse me, to Frisco, and break down this film a little more and then talk about it on Thursday. So uh, the next things we'll do is that, and then we'll focus in on the combine coming up in the future. So you guys take care. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.